There is a lot of conjecture within the fire protection industry about the classification of defects. And I guess I have a unique perspective on this subject as I was part of the committee, FP001, that helped write AS1851-2012, and I'm the person that designed the flowchart used in figure 1.2.6. Hi, my name is Russ Porteous and I'm the CEO of Firewise. In this video, we're going to provide a background and a need for classifying defects and summarize the three definitions covered in both AS 1851 and AS 2293 part two. Then we're going to look at the legal obligations in Queensland. And finally, we're going to look at some examples of defects to help get your mind around the subject. Australian Standard AS1851 sets out the routine servicing requirements for fire protection systems and equipment in Australia. The standard is published to provide the community and industry with a framework that is intended to ensure that fire protection systems and equipment in buildings are working and are likely to continue working, keeping people and buildings safe from fire. The standard is periodically updated with major changes called additions and minor changes called amendments. The development of the standard involves stakeholders from a broad spectrum of the community, including building owners, fire brigades, government, business and the fire protection industry. The inclusion of the definition of a critical defect was first introduced in Clause 1.5.3 of AS1851-2005. The definitions related to a defect were later expanded in the 2012 edition of 1851 to include a non-conformance non-critical defect and critical defect. These definitions were complemented with an illustration in figure 1.2.6 of the standard. In clause 1.5.6.2 of AS1851-2012, a non-conformance is defined as missing information or an incorrect feature that does not affect the system operation but is required to facilitate ongoing routine service. Clause 1.5.6.3 describes a non-critical defect as a system impairment or faulty component not likely to critically affect the operation of the system. And lastly, Clause 1.5.6.1 defines a critical defect as a defect that renders a system inoperative. Suffice to say that a critical defect is reasonably likely to have a significant impact on the safety of the occupants of the building. There are examples of these defects in the standard and we'll go through a few examples with some pictures later in this video. I should point out that the key phrase in each of these definitions is the word system as compared to item, part or component. It might sound like splitting hairs, but this is an important differentiation when classifying defects. I also want to note that figure 1.2.6 was inserted into the standard to provide a framework to help people classify defects using a simple flowchart. The definitions and the flowchart should make the application of the standard easy to apply, but like a lot of things, everyone has their own opinion. The Building Fire Safety Regulation in Queensland expands the definition of a critical defect and imposes strict reporting requirements on a person carrying out maintenance of a prescribed fire safety installation. The Queensland legislation defines a critical defect as a defect that is likely to render the installation inoperable and a defect that is reasonably likely to have significant adverse impact on the safety of the occupants of part or all of the building if a fire or hazardous materials emergency happens. If a person carrying out the maintenance of a prescribed fire safety installation becomes aware or ought reasonably to be aware of a critical defect in the installation, then they must give the occupier of the building a notice about the defect using an approved form called a critical defect notice. This form must be provided to the occupier within 24 hours after the maintenance activity has been performed. The occupier of the building must then ensure that the repair is carried out or a corrective action has been taken no later than one month after the maintenance of the installation was carried out, unless the occupier has a reasonable excuse. 
There are a lot of examples of defects, and for the sake of this video, I thought we might look at a few in order to discover how the classification of defects in the standard should be applied. I fully expect that someone will have their own idea about the classifications of these defects, and maybe they're different to my interpretation of the standard, even though I was a part of the committee that helped document and illustrate these requirements. So let's go. So I now want to go through a bunch of defects that are very common um, observations by people. The first one's probably not as common, but you'll get the gist of it as we go along. And it's uh, showing um, a battery that's been terminated without a proper lug. Uh, in this case, the terminal or the cable or conductors have just been wrapped around the battery terminal. Clearly that's a critical defect. The next one is a uh, smoke detector on the ceiling that's been covered up with a combination of tape and plastic. This could be considered e either a critical defect or a non-critical defect, depending on how many other detectors might be in the area. The next one is corrosion on a uh, sprinkler head, or in fact, in this case, it's the uh, sprinkler dropper or riser. Uh, this sprinkler head has substantial corrosion, but it's not adversely affecting the operation of the sprinkler head. So we'll call this one a non-critical defect. So the sprinkler head would still operate, it's just not optimal. Uh, this is, I think this may even be the same sprinkler head or in the same building. Um, and this is a, a sprinkler head with corrosion around the sprinkler head where it comes through uh, a metal deck. Um, and the corrosion is bad enough that you can see um, that there's some oxidation dripping from the sprinkler head. And this is due in part because of combination of two different metals being used in the same area. And I'd call this again a non-critical defect. It is something you'd want to deal with in a, in, without delay, but it's not going to affect the operation of the system. Here we've got a, uh, the enclosure of a jacking pump housing. I'd call this a critical defect because the conductors of the jacking pump are exposed and could pose a risk to electrocution. Uh, this was an interesting one. This is a mud plug in a uh, hydrant valve or landing valve. And we'll call this a critical defect because it could stop the flow of water through the valve when it was required. Uh, this one we'll call as a non-conformance and that's just simply a uh, cupboard for a foam station that had some um, facade corrosion. Nothing too pro problematic here so we'll call that a non-compliance. So this one is um, a bit unique. It's the housing of a fire pump that's being cracked and I would definitely call this a critical defect because it adverses the function of the entire system. And the system we're talking about is the water supply. So that is definitely a critical defect. Um, this is an uh, external warning device or external um, bell. Uh, I'd call this a non-critical defect because the rest of the fire alarm system would operate. And so this would be probably contentious by some people but in my perspective, this would be a non-critical defect because the operation of the fire systems within the building will still operate correctly. Um, this one here is a non-conformance. It's a fire extinguisher um, that's hidden behind a whole bunch of boxes. While it's accessible, it's not readily visible. Um, and it's something that could be just done with a bit of housekeeping. That's a number of examples that we might commonly find in buildings. There's a lot of contentious ones around fire doors that I haven't even covered. Um, around exceeding gaps. And there, you need to assess a lot of those on a case-by-case -case basis, but there are some general rule of th rules of thumb. So hopefully you have a better understanding of these defects and let's kick it off. So let me summarize what we've learned in this video about the definition and classification of defects. Australian Standards 1851 2012 and AS 2293 Part 2 covering emergency lights and exit signs both incorporate definitions for a non-conformance, non-critical defect, and critical defect. A critical defect is one that adversely affects the operation of a system and places people at imminent risk in the event of a fire or other emergency and must be dealt with quickly to keep people and buildings safe. A non-critical defect is one that is not likely to critically affect the operation of a system. And lastly, a non-conformance includes missing information or an incorrect feature that does not affect the system operation of an item of equipment or system, but may be required to facilitate ongoing routine service. 
the classification of a defect may impose a legal obligation on building owners or occupiers for the rectification of critical defects within a reasonable time frame. This video forms part of our burning question series and has been written and produced to help provide a deep dive into the subject covered. If you've reached this far in the video, thank you. And if you found this video particularly useful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to be notified when we publish new videos. If you would like more information about the maintenance of your fire protection systems and equipment, then please check out the FireWise website. If you need personalised support or specific advice, then send us an email at hello at firewise.com or call 1300 308822 and a friendly member of our support team will be there to help you.